So if you're looking to buy a telescope for your children or your family, whether it be for Christmas, a birthday, or at any time during the year, here are a few ideas of telescopes that might be a good fit for what you're looking for. So one common answer to the question of what telescope should I buy is not to buy a telescope at all, but actually to buy a pair of binoculars. Now one uh, example here is the Celestron Cometron binoculars, which are 7 by 50 so you have a 50 millimeter objective lens on each side, and you have 7x magnification. And while that's not very high, one thing to keep in mind with binoculars, if you want to be able to hand hold them, it does get very challenging to do that um, once, once you get past about 10x magnification, and certainly for a child, uh, even holding something beyond 7x can be very challenging to do in terms of keeping it steady. Because if, if you move your hands around a little bit at all, you're going to see the view through the eyepieces, you know, be moving, you know, considerably as well. And so that can make it very difficult to actually focus on something and really observe it well. Uh, now these binoculars, again, only 7x, so it's easy to observe things. You don't have too high a magnification, but it does still really bring in a lot more light than what your eyes can see normally. And so you're going to be able to see a lot more stars in the night sky. You're going to be able to see uh, the moons around Jupiter, things like that, and it really is going to help you see and learn the night sky very well. And these do give you a nice wide 6.8 degree field of view, so you can see a large portion of the sky at one time, which again makes it very easy to help find things. And the weight is pretty light as well, um, not uh, under two pounds, so not that hard to hold for a, for a period of time. Uh, one downside with these, again, they're a lower price binocular, and so, I'll be, and so while it is a fairly decent pair of binoculars, uh, you do lose out on certain features. So obviously the build quality won't be quite as good as a higher end pair. The optics aren't gonna be quite as good as a higher end pair, although they're still very nice. Uh, but however, one thing that might be a concern for you, depending on how your eyes are, is that the diopter adjustment only goes from plus, uh, from plus three to minus three. And so, uh, that is one thing to consider if you do have poor eyesight or the person you're buying it for does have poor eyesight uh, these may not be able to focus without the person wearing their contacts or glasses uh, again most higher end binoculars will have a larger diopter range from say minus five to plus five and so you can usually focus them without wearing glasses uh, which can be very nice to have uh, in terms of being able to see a little bit better through the uh, through the binoculars so overall these are a great value again there are some limitations but certainly for 35 bucks it's a really good solid pair that can you last you a very long time. Now, if you're looking really for that small portable telescope, something that can actually help bring in planets and, and you know really dive into craters in the moon and that kind of thing, here are a few ideas. Now, one thing, uh, now one telescope that's really probably the best buy out there if you live in the United States is the Astronomers Without Borders One Sky Reflector. This is a Dobsonian type reflector. It actually only costs $199 and you get a really nice set of optics with a couple eyepieces. This is really a great buy for getting into astronomy. And even if you already have a telescope, this can be a nice portable option as well. And one nice feature about it is that it has a Vixen rail on the side of the telescope. So you can actually take this telescope off the included mount and put it on any telescope mount. You can even attach it to a photo tripod um, if you have like a pan head that's very sturdy um, and use it in that way as well. Now this telescope does give you 5.3 inches of aperture, so that's really nice size. You're gonna be able to pull in a lot of detail on planets. You're gonna be able to you know, bring in a lot of light on, on uh, you know, some brighter galaxies and nebula and, and things like that. Um, and uh, it does still have a fast enough focal ratio of at f4.8 and a focal length of around 650 millimeters. So you are still gonna see a fairly wide field of view as well. And the whole thing only weighs 14 pounds. So very, very portable. It has a nice built-in handle into the stand so you can carry it around very easily. And again, it does collapse down very short as well to only 14 inches long. And so you can actually take the telescope off the mount, put it in a carry-on bag, take it traveling with you, and uh, it can really uh, be a nice telescope to have for that purpose. The included eyepieces are a 25 and a 10 millimeter one, um, so you get 26X and 65X with those included eyepieces. Um, if you buy a 2X Barlow, you can you can use that with the included eyepieces, and then you would see uh, also 52X magnification options and 130X with the included eyepieces if you use that Barlow lens. Um, so that's an, also a great way to sort of expand the telescope fairly cheap fairly cheaply and allow you to see uh, again a little bit higher power uh, with the included eyepieces now any type of reflector does require to be collimated and that means you have to have the mirror at the bottom of the telescope lined up correctly with the secondary mirror that's in the middle of a telescope that actually reflects the light into your eyepiece and into your eye 
if those mirrors are not aligned properly, you're not gonna have the light you know, angling the right way into your eye. You're gonna have part of the, the light from the first mirror will kind of miss the second mirror and so forth. And so you're gonna have you know, a decreased quality of view if the mirrors are not aligned. Now you do have a, it does include an eyepiece that does allow you to collimate the telescope properly. That can be a little bit challenging to do the first time if you haven't done it before. Basically you have to put the collimating eyepiece uh, uh, in the focuser and then there are adjustment knobs on the bottom of the telescope that you can adjust to basically line up the view through the eyepiece. So the mirrors, you'll basically see images of the mirrors. You're trying to produce sort of a nice concentric ring pattern of the images. And so that can help you get everything lined up properly. You can also buy a laser collimator, which makes things very easy to align. However, uh, that's gonna cost you almost as much money as a telescope itself does. And so that's kind of a high end option if you really wanna have something that's very easy to use. But certainly try using the eyepiece that, that's included for collimation. Um, usually once you collimate it, it'll stay collimated Unless, unless you bang it around and drop it or something like that um, for a while. So um, you don't have to do it every single time you use a telescope, but you do periodically need to make sure that things are lined up. And so you're not going to uh, end up with a blurry or sort of dimmer view than what you should have if everything is lined up properly. To buy the telescope, you have to actually go online to, astro to astronomerswithoutborders.org, and that is where you can actually buy it and have it shipped to you if you are within the U.S. Again, because of the situation of how they're able to get them for this low price, you can only buy them within the U.S. itself. You, you cannot buy them if you're in Europe or other parts of the world. Now, a similar telescope, uh, actually one that's probably a little bit more sturdy and probably a little bit better for little kids, uh, is the Orion Star Blast. It's a little bit smaller. Um, it only has a 4.5 inch aperture instead of 5.3 inches, and it's only a f4 focal length, so 450 millimeters. So it's not as long of a focal length. And so the result there is that it's not gonna do as well at high power. So you wanna see higher power views of Jupiter and Saturn. This is not, not the best telescope for that, but it will give you a wider field of view than the previous telescope does. And so it's really nice for panning through the Milky Way, for seeing large star fields and you know, you know nebulas and, and galaxies and things like that. Um, and so it can do a nice job at things that are sort of, you know, a little bit larger in size, especially. And if you wanna do see those nice, you know, starry, you know, views through the eyepiece. But again, uh, because it is a shorter focal length, it's really hard to push up the magnification very high. You do get a 17 and a 6 millimeter eyepiece, so you can get up to 75x with that eyepiece, and you can get a you can get a a uh, Barlow lens and push that up to 150x uh, if you get a 2x Barlow lens. But most likely, the view at 150x is not going to be um, as good as it could be through a different telescope because it is a short focal length. That means also that the secondary mirror is a little bit larger in diameter. And so it blocks more of the light coming into the telescope. And so that also uh, kind of decreases the contrast a little bit. And so it's not going to be the best telescope for looking at planets, but it's still going to show you the rings around Saturn. It'll show you some of the cloud bands on Jupiter as well as the moons around Jupiter and things like that. It'll show a nice, very, it'll show a very nice view of the moon as well. So it is going to, it can show you planets certainly, but uh, other telescopes that are a longer focal length, they're going to do a better job at showing you higher powered views of, of the moon and of the planets. But, but uh, overall, it's still a nice starter package and something that's very nice to use with little kids. It's uh, small and lightweight and fairly sturdy. And so that does check off a lot of boxes if you're buying this telescope for some young children. Now, if you have a, a better interest in planets and the moon, this is actually a very similar telescope, the Orion SkyQuest XT 4.5. It's actually the same exact aperture, so it brings in the same amount of light, but it does so in a three foot long optical tube. So it's a much larger telescope, again, being three feet long uh, than the Star Blast was, which is only about 14 inches long. A much larger telescope than the Star Blast was actually twice as long. The Star Blast was 18 inches long. This is about 36 inches long. And so, uh, again, it's not certainly very large. It still only weighs 18 pounds or so fully assembled. So it's not a very heavy telescope. It's still very easy to move around and carry around even for children. And uh, even with a three foot length, it's still not going to be too unwieldy for a child to use. But because it is a larger, a, or rather a longer focal length at 900 millimeters, you can achieve much higher uh, magnifications very easily. And it's gonna do a better job on the moon and the planets. In fact, the included eyepieces give you up to 91X uh, as they are. And if you, you can, you can and with a 2X Barlow lens uh, added on as well, you can push that up to 182X. And so that will give you a very nice view of Jupiter and Saturn 
And so this is a nice option if you are more interested in looking at planets. Now the downside of having a longer focal length is that you cannot get as wide of a field of view. And so you're not going to be able to see a large portion of the sky at one time with an eyepiece. And so that does limit your ability to see some larger star clusters. And you're not gonna be able to see, you know, those wide field of views of the Milky Way, which can be very beautiful with a wider field of view. And so that is the one downside with pretty much all telescopes. Most telescopes can do everything very well. So some telescopes can do very well at high powered views of planets. Some telescopes can do really well at wide field of views, but not very many that are on the lower price scale can do both of those things uh, very easily. Now, if you are looking for something similar to this, but something that's gonna be a little bit better in terms of pulling in a little bit more light, you can actually buy the X-T6 version, which is a six inch aperture, uh, pretty much the same overall telescope, but just a little bit larger in diameter and a little bit longer as well. Um, that does in fact, though, push the weight up to 35 pounds though, because again, it does require a larger uh, base mount because it's a little bit wider in diameter and a little bit longer, it has to be a little bit heavier so it doesn't tip over. And so that does make it a little bit harder to carry around. So that would be something that would be a good idea for like a teenager or an adult, but it's not going to be as easy for a child to move around very easily. Now, another option in the small and lightweight category are the Celestron uh, C90 and the Skywatcher 90 millimeter Max Maxitov Cassegrains. These telescopes are a compact telescope that can give you a 90 millimeter aperture, so that's a little bit less than four inches. Uh, but they do so in a nice compact size in terms of length. And these are very easy to put on a photo tripod, uh, to throw in a carry-on bag, and they're very sturdy as well. And you don't have to worry about collimation, generally speaking, with these telescopes. And uh, again, they are gonna give you a pretty nice view on planets. They have a long focal length, and so uh, they are the type of telescope that can do very well on the moon, on Jupiter, on Saturn but you're not gonna get that wide field of view. They're actually gonna work very similar to that uh, XT 4.5 we just saw on the, previous, uh, on the previous slide. And so this is sort of a similar option, but a smaller package and uh, somewhat lighter weight as well. They're really nice to have. They're very easy to travel with. They're very small, compact in size. And they are gonna show you some really nice views on uh, things like the moon, the planets, and obviously you can use them for nature, birding, that kind of thing as well, because they are small and compact. You can put them on a photo tripod. They work really well for sort of a wide variety of uses uh, outside of just astronomy. Now, these two options here are $199 just for the uh, the telescope by itself with, with an eyepiece and a, and a diagonal and a Celestron one. The Skywatcher one for an extra $80 gives you a tracking mount. It doesn't have a go-to feature with it, but it does allow you to actually uh, move the telescope around and then and then it'll keep tracking for you um so if you do want to have a, a view of the of the of say jupiter you want to keep it in the eyepiece without having to move the telescope around manually to keep it you know in line it uh, will track it for you and that makes it a little bit easier to use in terms of uh, having multiple people look at it and not have to worry about the planet drifting out of the field of view and that kind of thing and now, if you want to go to something a little bit larger that's going to do a much better job on sort of a, you know the vast majority of objects up there in the night sky, uh, here are some other good ideas to look at. Now, again, the Dobsonian telescope is really the most versatile in terms of giving the largest aperture at the lowest price and sort of the best views for the lowest price. Now, this Orion SkyQuest X-T8 is one example. There's a lot of manufacturers that make Dobsonian telescopes of the 8-inch or, or, or so diameter size. Again, this is a manual telescope. There's no tracking or anything like that. And so you have to manually push the telescope around to find the object you're looking for, and then keep pushing it to keep that object in the field of view. And so it can be a little bit tricky looking at planets and keeping the planet in the actual view of the eyepiece for a long period of time at a high power. You have to kind of get used to moving the telescope by hand and following the planet as it moves across the sky during the course of a night. And so that is the one downside of having a telescope like this. Now there is actually an option uh, for the Orion brand, brand of telescopes where they do provide a tracking uh, version of this telescope. It actually has motors on there that will track objects for you and actually provide go-to functionality where it will actually point the telescope at the object you want to find. Uh, those do cost a lot more money though. In fact, it's almost double the price. And so um, it certainly uh, you can buy a telescope like this that will do tracking and will do go-to and find objects and that kind of thing, but you're going to have to pay a lot more money for it. Now, probably the most popular telescope of all time is the SCT or Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Uh, and Celestron makes two very popular ones in the 6SE and the 8SE, uh, the 6 one being a 6 inch aperture scope and the 8 one being an 8 inch aperture scope. The actual mount is identical on both. There's no difference there. There's only the size of the telescope on it. You can actually take the telescope off and use it on other mounts and you can actually put different telescopes on these mounts as well. 
um, and so they are versatile in that regard. And they're fairly low price as well. These have been around for many years. There's a lot of people, people that have used them for a long time, and so they do have a, a long history uh, of, uh, of being used, and so they are you know known to be reliable for the most part. Um, the one downside of them is because they are a little bit lower price. There's a lot of plastic in them, and so you know the whole mount does have a lot of plastic that can break. You know if, if it's roughly handled sometimes and that kind of thing. But for the most part, as long as you're careful with it, this mount will last you many, many years, and you're going to get some really nice views with the 6SC or the 8SC. The 8SC will certainly give you a better view of planets, a better view of everything, um, but it is heavier, and, uh, and so that's always the downside with this kind of thing. Uh, it's always nice to have a larger telescope, but every large, larger telescope you buy is going to be a heavier one, generally speaking, and that makes it a little bit harder to move around, a little bit harder to set up. And obviously that's something to consider in terms of uh, you know this kind of kind of thing. That eight inch telescope two by itself is gonna be you know probably on the order of 12, 13 pounds, which is right at the limit for that mount. Um, the six inch telescope is more like eight pounds or so, eight to nine pounds, and so it's a better fit for that uh, for that mount in terms of being a little bit more sturdy and stable uh, with the views. But these uh, but these mounts do provide go-to and tracking capability capabilities, which is very nice. Uh, you can buy an adapter shown there on the right hand side there below the eight inch telescope tube there that allows you to plug it into the telescope mount and control the telescope with your smartphone. So you can use the uh, Celestron has an app you can download to your phone and you can actually control the telescope through the Wi-Fi connection on your phone. And uh, you can, once everything is set up and you know, and, and, and the, the phone knows the telescope is there and that kind of thing, you can actually control everything with your phone, which is really, really nice. So you can actually scroll around on the screen on your phone, uh, you know, looking at uh, the actual uh, map of the stars and the objects on your phone, and then pick an object on the phone with your finger, and the telescope will point to it if you, if you have that adapter, which is really nice. And it really is a way to basically, uh, you know, keep kids interactive and entertained we're looking at objects in the night sky because one downside you'll find with telescopes and small children is that they may really enjoy the views of a certain object, but then it may take you quite a while to actually hunt down and find the next thing you want to look at. And so if they have to sit around for five or 10 minutes while you kind of hunt down the next object, uh, they can lose interest and want to you know go wander off or whatever. And so if you can actually have your smartphone there and, and they can actually pick what they want to look at and touch it and then see the telescope move to that object, it's, it's kind of neat for them to see that. And it does keep them uh, more uh, entertained and more sort of uh, into the uh, observing experience. And so you can actually see a lot more objects in a, say, hour-long observing session if, you, if your telescope can actually go to those objects directly by itself without you having to go hunt them down. And so uh, that is certainly a nice feature to have. Um, the downside, of course, is that it's going to cost you more money than a telescope that does not have tracking and go-to features in it. And so that's obviously always going to be the case with any type of telescope that has that type of functionality. But the 6SC, you can usually buy it on sale for $6.99 when it's on sale. Um, the normal price is $7.99 uh, for that telescope. The 8-inch version with the mount is normally $11.99, um, but usually on sale around Christmas or other holidays, you may find it on sale for $9.99, sometimes even a little bit cheaper than that. Or they may in fact just uh, have a little bit higher price, but they'll include maybe some additional options. They may include that Wi-Fi connector adapter piece uh, for free, or they may give you an extra eyepiece or two. Now, Celestron also makes the, the same scope, but with higher end mounts. These are the Celestron Evolution mounts, the EVO 6 or the EVO 8. Uh, it's actually the same exact optical tube as the 6SC or the 8SC, but they painted it a different color. Um, but it's the exact same tube, otherwise same optics and everything. But the telescope mount itself does have some nice features. One nice feature is that it has some uh, locks on there. You can, on, you can loosen them and turn the telescope and point it anywhere you want uh, in the night sky without it losing track of what it's pointed at. With the 6SC, you have, to, you have to use the motor controls to point the telescope. You can't manually move it around. If you do that, it's going to lose track of what it's pointed at. And you have to go through the whole setup process all over again to basically start tracking and uh, and finding things in the night sky. This telescope, you can move it around manually and then go right back to tracking and right back to go-to functions, uh, and it's not going to lose track of where it's pointed, which is a really nice feature. Also, the telescope mount itself is much sturdier. Um, it is heavier, though, as a result, but uh, it is a nice sturdy mount, uh, and so it can handle the 8-inch telescope uh, much better. You can actually put on uh, other telescopes as well that might be a little bit heavier, and it'll work with those pretty nicely as well. And another great feature is it actually has the Wi-Fi functionality built into it, so you can use this telescope right out of the box with your smartphone, which is really nice.
Also, it has a built-in rechargeable battery, which gives you 10 hours of use on a single charge. The previous telescopes, the 6SE and the 8SE, require uh, AA batteries. Uh, either you wanted to buy the lithium batteries or you want to buy the uh, AC adapter and plug it into a power bank or a wall or, or you know, an extension cord kind of thing to, uh, to power the uh, SC telescope. Um, again, these Evo telescopes have a battery built in that lasts for 10 hours, so no problem there at all. And again, it is a little bit more stable and sturdy mount, and so you're going to have a much more uh, steady view when you look through it. And also, you can put a heavier telescope on it at a later time, and it will be able to handle that, um, at least within a reasonable range of, uh, of weight. So um, it is a nicer overall mount. Again, though, it does cost a lot more money, uh, $11.99 or $15.99 for the 6 or the 8-inch uh, version of the Evolution Telescope. Obviously, telescopes... Obviously, they may be on sale for lower prices or whatever, but but uh, it is going to cost you several hundred dollars more than the SC version. And again, you're not getting better optics; you're getting the exact same telescope optics, but you're just buying a basically a more sturdy and more durable telescope mount. So anyway, to summarize here, you spent a lot of time watching this video if you got, if you've gotten to this point. But uh, the bottom line is, if you want to spend 150 dollars or less you really should just buy a pair of binoculars. Uh, now for a small telescope, the One Sky or Star Blast or the Celestron C90 are really nice options, you know, for that $200 price point. And they are gonna give you some nice views that can really last you for a long time in terms of having a telescope that can that can really be a, a nice, uh, you know, sort of small portable one to have. You might Now the Dobsonian reflector, you can get those in size, again, from the four and a half inch telescope all the way up to like the, you know, 25 inch telescope or even bigger than that. Um, and they give you the best bang for the buck in terms of views and price, but they obviously get very large and cumbersome and heavy uh, as you get to the larger diameter optical tubes. You now, SCT telescopes are really nice. The six inch and the eight inch SCT is extremely popular. It's been around for decades. It's, you know, almost everyone has bought one who's been into astronomy at some point, and they are fairly compact and easy to move around. They do give you really nice views of most things. Uh, they're not going to have the highest quality optics. They're not going to have you know the widest field of view and, and that kind of thing as other telescopes. But they do allow you to have a nice view of most objects in the night sky uh, at a fairly affordable price. And uh, they do. And being a nice compact telescope, they are really nice to use on telescope mounts that have go-to functionality and tracking and that kind of thing um, without having to spend a whole lot of money. So these are some nice options to look at if you are looking to buy a telescope for your for your family or, or for yourself or whoever. Um, and there are certainly far more options than these available out there. Many are similar to these, though. And so, uh, you know, if you have a question, you can certainly ask it in the comments below. Also, if you have a telescope that you think is really a nice option to have that is uh, fairly affordable for people that are starting out, also put that in the comments below so people can take a look at it and, uh, you know, have more things to kind of check out. So anyway, that's just a look at some options if you're looking to buy a telescope. And thanks for watching. Bye.